Hello everybody, um, I hope you're all very well. It's uh, Steffi here from The Makers and today we are making little... We've got the little tiny robin to needle felt today. So um, if you've just seen the end card on... Um, if you've just seen the end card on, on, on the, um, the screen, then um, you'll get the beginning card at the end, maybe. We'll see. So apologies for that. Um, it's, my, it's, a, it's a teeny, teeny, it's that tiny, teeny a blooper. It's so tiny, it, it almost doesn't count. Um, let's have a look at um, um, who is here today. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, here we go. Um, hi, Mo. Hi, Alicia. Happy birthday for yesterday, Alicia. Um, and um, hi Jackie, nice to see you here. I know you've been chatting for a while because I've, I've heard it all from Emma. So um, I just needed to put a bit of lippy on so that took a bit longer um, than normal. Um, so Emma is there, of course. Mo is there. I'm just giving you the heads up next week. Emma is on holiday. I am already shaking in my boots. What am I going to do with Emma? Um, without Emma, rather. <laughs> <laughs> dear oh dear um hi erica um um oh i i, I want to read all these comments but i'll be sitting here all day just reading the comments so i just i'm just going to have a, a quick quick look um if in case there's an important bit that i'm missing so um serena is there hi serena uh hi helen oh who else is there um hi kathy Hi, Lynn. Lots of you. Excellent. So that's really nice that you're all here um, to support us, the makers, of course. So I, I tried really hard to get into the Christmas spirit. I must say, when I got up this morning, I thought, what can I wear that's Christmassy? And what I'm wearing is not what is the Christmassy bit. The Christmassy bit is underneath, but I've forgotten to take the top off. And it's not even that Christmassy because it's only a star. I'll show you quickly. There. That's my Christmas star. So I'm, but I'm leaving my top on because it's not actually that warm today. And I thought I could get away with a t-shirt. But um, instead I've got a Christmas green jumper and, and a star. Because that's my surname anyway. So the baubles are really, really delightful little robins. And they look like that. And you can make them your own by um, slightly varying where you put the red patch and where you put the eyes. And so they can be they can be a bit more shapely if you want to make them more like a, a, a real bird shape. But remember, it's about baubles, so I'm keeping mine nice and round. And then you get, if you've got our Christmas bauble pack, which looks like this, you can actually make three robins and three puddings out of this. And some of you, I suspect, will be felting alongside. So that's really nice to see. Well, or I imagine I can see it. Um, you can, of course, scale things up and down and in this pack you can also make Christmas puddings and they're hanging here. So I might just do a quick demo on the Christmas pudding when, once I've done the, the robin. But this here da, 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 is the big pudding that you could also be making. Not from this pack, mind, because you need more wool than that. But once you know how to make small, you can also make big. And what I found is um, I've been really, really tired um, having worked long hours at the weekend and all the days of the week last week. And what I found is that a Christmas pudding is an ideal chin rest. So if nothing else, just just chill by resting your chin after you've been stabbing and stabbing for hours uh, to get this pudding. Just chill just chill on there it's actually really nice just to chill I'll, I'll take my head off otherwise I'll fall asleep in front of um, you all but I will give you some tips and tricks of how to make um, scale the pudding up to a big pudding there you go and before you ask there is nothing inside we didn't put anything in there for people to find when they eat it because people are not going to eat it okay so I'm going to um, start by introducing you to our uh, where's it gone there this is our Christmas wool pack. If you haven't got this um, yet, this is definitely an essential. There's, it's just wool, but it's all the essential wools that you need to make any kind of Christmas decorations. Um, so I'm going to open this now. You get in there also a bit of sparkly stuff. That's exactly what we call it. So if you want to sparkle things up a bit, though I will give you some sparkling hints and tips 
later as well because we've got some amazing um, other sparkly stuff that um, comes in a liquid form. And, um, and then you get two types of brown. So this is the perfect Christmas pudding brown. It, it literally looks like um, sort of a dark um, sponge base. This is a great color for the for the Christmas robins. In fact, it is the color that you also find in the Christmas uh, robin bauble pack. And then you get your whites, different whites. This one is the um, Cape Merino, which is the shorter fiber. But it's perfect for the pudding topping. And you get all of that in your Christmas in this pack as well, but obviously in smaller quantities that only allows you to make three of each. So if you want to make lots of them because they're great little presents or you want to make them um, to just decorate your trees. That's, just with that, you get lots in there. Um, and and this is more wool to make more. And then you also get different types of red here. Um, we only need one type of red for the robin and for the pudding, but you might choose to use another one. That's what I mean. You can make your own style of um, robin if you wish. Right, let's start by using the white wool. Now you need about uh, um, 10 grams to make um, a, a robin. If you're unsure, if you haven't got scales at home, a good this is a good trip, trick, so um, remember that. If you wanna know how big something might end up once you've stabbed it and stabbed it and stabbed it, try and roll it as tightly as you can into this tiniest little ball that you can, and then you get an idea of the size of a, um, a, a amount of wool. This is sort of the worst case scenario if you've stabbed it lots and lots of time. If that is, um, too small then just unwind it and add a little bit more wool into the equation so I, I'd say this is probably just under 10 grams so I'm adding a little bit more to make it that right amount and before I start I'm just going to have a quick look um, what people are saying so oh Emma is um, perfect she's got the Christmas wool mix link here already um, definitely a large pudding um, thank you, Donna, for for saying that. And um, but I'm I'm starting right random in the middle and um, at the bottom. So, oh, you can see Santa. Alicia says yes. So Santa, this is um, the big Santa that's based on the small Santas that we do, which is the um, Christmas um, Tomta and um, Santa kit. And um, this one you can make as well. Um, you just need to get the big wool pack um, for our big Santa. Hello. Somebody wore him as a hat before and then tied the legs up underneath their chin. So there's a Christmas costume suggestion. I'd like to see when you've made one. I'd like to see uh, you wear it. So remember, oh God, that's an overboard. Okay. So that um, that's that. Um, what else can you see? What else? Emma is abandoning you. I know she is. Hope you have fun, but Emma. Oh, she might be just sneaking in to have a little look. Um, how could you say that? I'll still be. Oh, thank you, Emma. <laughs> oh, um, I'm just reading. So the bubble pack is now on the link. If you if you're watching this live, then you can see this in the comments. If you're not watching this live, then there should be a link in the in the um, actual. Um, description of the video or the stream anyway. Um, Catherine says, I love that. Um, Alicia says, oh my god, he's giant. Um, oh yes, thank you, Emma. We've also got the PDF instruction for these baubles. So if you um, have them, then um, if you have the instructions, then when you've got the wool, then you're in business as well. If you're having a pudding, may well get a big one, absolutely. Um, oh, Alicia has got two packs. Well, you might be able to do the big one. Um, Helen says she's got hers. Um, so then we've got, um, I have, oh, and Donna says she's got that pack just so Christmassy. Um, and of course, if you are wanting to make this, uh, this Father Christmas, he's entirely felted. So um, his, his legs and arms are in pipe cleaner. So he's literally based on our small Christmas um, tomter and the hat is completely felted. So it's it's with a needle. There's no wet felting. It's all stuck with a needle. Poor old Santa. He's had lots of acupuncture, lots and lots and lots. 
but he's kind of happy chappy he likes dangling his legs like that and um he likes dangling his arms as well and he likes waving at people and he says oh ho, 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 ho. there you go um yeah he's he's definitely he needs a little bit of um tidying up oh now i've got lots of fiber in my face Whew. right what else is going on food shop took too long felting more important oh teresa i think that might be where have you been oh you're here now you've been food shopping um, I've actually sent my daughter this afternoon. Sorry, I've got to itch my nose now because I've got Santa, Santa dust in it. Um, just ordered the Christmas wool pack. Excellent. Um, Alicia says, good job, Kathy. I keep a tap open just for putting <laughs> things on my list to buy. I think you've got it all worked out, um, Alicia. We all need to take a lesson from you. Okay, so let's uh, get back to um, making this little pudding. And I'm going to go a little bit, uh, in fact, a lot smaller. I'm going into um, the close-up mode. I'm actually now doubling up my um, my earth mats here. And this one here might just need a little clean. Um, oh, yeah, there's some fibers coming. It's very satisfying getting the fibers off. Um, if you're wondering what I'm using, this is a green, a green rubber um, brush. And that takes sort of some of the excess fibers off your earth mat. And, of course, if you haven't got the earth mat yet, you don't know what you're missing you really do not um just put that out of the way there we go that's nice and ready now and i've got my white wool here so i'm going to wind this into a ball now and um when i say wind it what is really works well is if you're teasing these fibers out so that you get around this shape as often as you can by just putting these fibers around it so then you get a nice smooth surface and when you sort of come to the end of it, then just felt down these wispy ends into the, the shape that you have just made. So you might want to use your coarse needle for this. That's the coarse needle. Give it a few steps in and out. So this is what the felting process actually is in and out. And you've got, um, you've got a shape that might not res resemble a ball just yet, but it's a round shape. And um, it's a it's a shape that holds together. And now we're going to work on making it round. So I'm just tucking these last fibers in. So where you've got an, an a bit sticking out like this here, um, if if this was a lump of clay, you would naturally just pat it and roll it and you know squeeze these bits in. And that's exactly what the needle is doing for you. So when you've got bits sticking out, that is when you want to stack the needle into exactly that place, because that will um, reduce the size where you need it to reduce. What we always say is when you're needle felting, keep a little bit of your wool. Um, with this one, you won't, um, it won't be so essential because we're covering up a lot of it with other colors anyway. But keep a little bit of the wool to one side so that you can cover up any areas that might be unsightful. So for example, I've got a bit here that doesn't look too smart. It's got a bit of a, um, a dent in there. Nothing is lost. I don't need to start over again. I'm just going to ignore it for now and I'll work my way around the ball to firm it up. So I'm going all around it, stabbing the needle into it and I'm working with a coarse needle at the moment. What you must never do is if you've got an area like this here, it will not disappear by stabbing into it. A lot of people think that you will make it worse because you're just emphasizing that area that you're actually trying to... Um, make go away you will just make it dig bigger that's a little bit like if you want to fill in a hole you don't continue digging you do that's exactly the opposite from what you need to do so once you've made your round shape and it give it a little roll between your hands why not and um, once you've got a rounded shape if you if this is really bothering you then I'll show you how to get rid of it so take a little bit of your white wool lay it over the top smooth it over like that and then just stab it into place on the edges first so that it's established and then go all over um, to felt it down and that's what's called covering up a crack um, we always say oh you shouldn't cover up cracks well that's complete nonsense when you needle felting you are allowed to cover up cracks it's perfectly fine to do that and um, I wish you could do that so easily with um, with yourself as well there you go so here we go we've got a nice little ball there now looks like a snowball right
So what are you going to do next is we're going to give the robin his um, his wings and for this we need um, that nice brown that I showed you earlier. It's coming in here now. There. Um, you just take off a pinch. So we don't weigh wool as such. We just, uh, um, unless it's a larger quantity, but when it's less than a gram, then we just say a pinch and I've got a sneeze, which is why I'm talking all funny. It's that naughty father Christmas that put um, magic dust up my nose. It's gone now. Often it helps if you say I need to sneeze and then the sneeze goes away. So you've got a flat piece here and I'm, I'm just literally putting this on top of the robin. Now, if you have an area that you really, really do not like on your round ball, then cover that up now and um, and just put this on top. And what we're going to do now is you're looking at the robin from the front. You're going to tease these wispy bits down into the face of the robin. And that's where you establish um, it first. And I'm actually going to change to um, a medium needle now because I don't want to do so much um, deep core work. I actually just want to fasten the top on. So I'm 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 sh I'm painting the top of the robin on onto the onto the ball by making that little dent here first, and that is where um, the the beak is going to sit. And then I'm going to give him a middle parting. So I'm going from the dent of that nose all the way to the back, like that, fastening the top on like this so it looks now as if he's got um like i say a middle parting going up along his top and then i'm going to use my needle to paint the shape of the wings on on the side and um i'm not worried at all at the moment if he's got a slightly bald patch somewhere i'm literally just putting um this rounded curve onto the side of the robin so that um he, he has that wing shape on the side here. And all of this is really lofty still, so I haven't felted that down yet. Then I'm going to do that on the other side. It definitely helps to look at the robin from the front. So I'm looking at it from the front now. And then copy that sort of same um, wing um, length and depth um, on the other side. And then you um, can start um, felting the top on. So at the moment, I, I have a very clear shape here in that I've got my the nose in the center and then I've got that wing shape here on the side and here on that side. And that should be symmetrical if you look at it from the front. And this is probably where most people um, can go wrong, that they just not look enough at their shapes from from the front um, so that they can adjust any any sort of um, felting, um, any shapes, any symmetry. And, uh, and now I'm going to stab on the rest of the brown wool on top of that robin, going um, following that wing shape, but now going between the middle parting and the wing shape, I'll stab it on, and I'll do that on the other side as well. And now and then I'm going to assess in a minute, where is their bald patch, where do I need to add more wool? It's always better to work with less wool than with too much, because it's easier to add wool than to pull off. And at the moment, the back of this is all unshapely and sticky out. And now I want to bring this in into more of a pointy tail. So I use my fingers to bring this to shape it. And now you can turn your robin over and just um, shape that out on the mat like that. And you can actually shape it, continue shaping it with your needle by just bringing it together into a point underneath. When you flat, felt like this you have to be careful lifting your work off because you don't want it to um, stick to the mat and then it just sort of pulls off the whole of the robin and what you will also find is whenever ever you're working on a, on anything that you do you always find that you have to adjust the shaping that you thought you had sort of kind of finished with already so you you're assessing all the time where do I need to add more wool? Where do I need to stop more? Where do I need to readjust the shape of the robin? So I've now decided he's got the top on. I stopped him a lot on the top. Now I need to compensate for all of that around the area that I had already um, worked on. But I want to maintain that round shape. So I need to continue um, stabbing into the white. And um, because I've, I've felt it more off the top than I have around the um, white <clears throat> um, shape now. 
He's got his little tail that's um, almost finished. I need to stop that a little bit more. And he's got a bald patch here and a bald patch there. And I'm going to um, fill that in with more wool. But I'm just going to work on that tail a little bit more now that his shape is a bit clearer. So I'm stabbing that tail from this side. And it really helps if you've got an elevated um, felting mat because then you can do the same from um, the um, from the other side where you where you've got the larger rounder shape underneath you can now felt from the top and again you have to when you take off that flat felted tail end just gently lift it off because you don't want to lift the whole of the top of the robin and I quite like it when their tails are kindly kind of sticking out like a tiny little kick a uh, kick sort of um, on the back there and um, I'm adjusting the white again because that's just the nature of what you do. And my fingers are itching now to get extra brown on him because he looks like he needs it. But I'm just going to make that tail a little bit more perfect. And then again from the other side. So my stubs are really quite shallow and short. They're not. I'm not going crazy on this. I'm just tidying up rather than um, building um, a completely new shape here I'm just literally tidying up now and um, if your tail's too long you can t take wisps off and then felt um, the remaining down and now I'm literally just going to put the bits of wool where it's too bald I put wool over the top and cover up these bald areas following that same line of the wing that I've got there you you might have bald bits in other places this is this is your robin don't do this on yourself of course you might have bald bits on other places but you can't cover it up with wool um, when that happens I'll let you know but just for now just um, use the wool and the needle on your robin um, and now I'm going to do a little bit more here at the front where his face looks a bit like it could do with I'm making these a bit shorter so I don't have um, such a long strand and I'm just gonna stab that into place so that he's got a nice even cover on his face. There we are. Oh, he's he I'm already liking him a lot. It does pay off taking a little bit of care. The worst thing that I always find is when I have to rush things. So I'm trying to do this as um as I would probably make a robin in my own time without having to rush. Now don't despair if it takes you longer to do this because I have needle felted for over 15 years. And um, it, it, I sometimes, and I've, I'm always a fast crafter. I always have been, and I've always like, it's not that I'm rushing. I just tend to needle felt fast or do other things fast as well. There we go. So now I've got my little robin here. Um, the wings look quite even on both sides, pretty much the same with a little tail that's sort of kicking out here slightly sticking out at the back and um, now I can um, begin by putting the little red patch on his chest and before I do that I let you catch up I'm just gonna go big again and then um, I look at some of the comments as well so um, let's have a look what everybody is what everybody is up to so we have got oh my goodness I have to try and catch up I don't think I've ever been on a video stream or live stream where there's so much chatter going on. I just, I just love it. I really do. Um, okay, flipping my earth mat over now. Doggies all do dark on one side. Oh yes, so you can use your um, top layer of the felting mat. In fact, I've already done that, as you can see. That one has been used and that one has been used so at some point i flicked it over you can flick it over so you can have a um a light and a dark um side for different fibers let's have a look okay just looking through all these comments here um oh so somebody else um in fact diane has got the rubber brush mat and it works great yes we we do sell this on our website I'm sure that Emma has posted the link already and I've probably missed it um, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> sorry I've just got to laugh because I've been trying to um, avoid making this Robin look like a certain politician with a very very bad wig um, but now you've said that it looks like a really bad wig I'm not mentioning any names 
um, but uh, yes, um, and it's not blonde either. Sorry, I missed the beginning. Oh, don't worry, Carol. It's just lovely to have you here. Um, Rachel says, stabbing along. I think my Robin's been at the sherry. <laughs> it won't stand up. It's not meant to stand up. It's meant to hang up. Don't worry. Mine's not standing up either. It sort of rolls over. Look, it's got a bit of a... It, it's, it's leaning over starboard side. So don't worry about it. it it'd be fine. Um, talking about um, Rachel. Rachel, I absolutely loved your display of the butterflies with um the fairy lights and um and the the prepped tree that you did it was beautiful so um yeah we we we've all loved it here at the makers um and and of course oh god now i'm started to think i've got to mention everybody now i i loved all your dogs all of you who've done the dogs i my heart's been melting i loved um your little mice alicia especially the ones with with little mice breasts i think that was just the sweetest thing ever and um um, and if I'm missing anybody and I don't mention anybody there, um, I, I want to mention you all, but um, that's a, for another time. So I do apologize if you feel left out. If you feel terribly left out, then just put a comment there and say, Oi, mention da di da and I will. Um, Pamela is there. I cheated and made balls by stuffing core in ball shape into nylons and ooh, popping them in the washer and dryer well that's absolutely fine if you want to wet for wet felt your balls oh my god that's <laughs> not good <laughs> if you want to wet for some balls and um, baubles some bauble shapes then you can you definitely can i think i'm actually blushing now isn't it eggnog at christmas Yes, I think somebody's eating, uh, drinking eggnog, right? That's why I didn't mention names, Steffi. Just the bad wig could be anyone. That's correct. Okay. Oh, dear. Okay, this is getting a little bit out of hand. Um. Anyway, there's the little Robin. Okay, I'm going to go close up again for, um, for the little red chest. Okay, so here we go. Right. Um, let me go close and then... Um, so now you know how much you've used for the top. You know you will use a little bit less for the um, for the red chest. Now everybody knows, right? Everybody knows that robins actually don't have red chests. Their chests are actually orange. But we all think we say robin red chest. And so for this particular robin, I am taking um, the creative freedom to give him a red chest because that's what we how we associate how we associate the robins with that little bit of red on there so perfect let's get um let's get working on his little red chest so you're putting the the red on 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 here below that dip that you've made and now you're going to draw a perfect um circle by stabbing the needle into that red wool and it does definitely help if you make sure that you are um, symmetrical to the rest of the robin so you can either fill in all this white that's entirely up to you or you can leave it um, slightly um, a gap between the brown and the white but um, felt a circle and then you're going to pull the wool that's outside that circle pull it into the center and stab it down when you make um, at some point you might want to make a robin that's more realistic then you can um, keep that red a little bit or that orange that you probably will be using when you make a more realistic robin and let it sort of like look at let it look wispy or dust like a dusting but we want to give it a really um literally a perfect little round red chest there so um i've i've done the outside and then i've got to felt down the inside of this now at the moment it's sticking out a bit because i haven't felted this down yet it's quite bouncy and loose still so I'm going to now give it stabs all around there. And you know what I'm going to say next is once you concentrate on one area, you're going to have to review your whole Robin in a minute again and make sure that he's still nice and round and hasn't just suddenly become, become flat where you've been stabbing for the red. But I'm just going to stab all that red onto him. There's a single tiny fiber of Angelina fiber that I can see um, from miles away. So I've just taken that out there making this little red chest nice and solid and again if you've got a um if you have got a bit of a um bald 
area there just just take wisps of the red and fill it in and then you'll be absolutely fine so now i've felted this on i can actually see that i've i've made an indentation here because the white um, hasn't had that um, concentrated stabbing and if i look at him sideways he looks okay actually he's not too much out of shape but i am just going to go into the white to compensate for that um for that red chest and just making sort of catching up with the shaping all around it as well because that red has um, solidified the shape a little bit more and now i'm going to make him nice and round everywhere else you have to imagine that he's going to be hanging up here so um i think it's okay for him to um you know not well this one actually does <laughs> does stand now i seem to have uh, solved the lopsidedness as well but it doesn't matter if yours isn't standing up um because you're going to put um, a thread in the top of him to hang him up on the Christmas tree so that's absolutely fine if he's not um, a standing robin so don't don't worry about that so I'm still giving the robin a good makeover all around because there's only two more things that I need to do on him now and one is to give him a beak and the other one is to give him eyes and I leave the eyes until last and I'm going to give him a beak next so I'm just giving him a good old stabbing all over and once I've done that, I'll um, show you how to make the beak. I can do this straight away from here. So you will take the, the darker brown that you have in your Robin um, pack or that you get in your Christmas wool pack and you take literally a, a tiny small wisp. And I'm just gonna lay this down so you can see. And then you can fold this over, fold it in half. So the folded edge is at the top and then you roll it in either from the left or from the right or from both sides so that you um, roll the, the top in where the folded edge is slightly more. So give it maybe even like a twist between your fingers. And that is the only area, that area that I've just flattened down with my finger that you're gonna give shallow little stubs all around. Hold on to the end, on the fluffy end, so that you can keep turning it round and gently teasing it off the mat. And all you're doing is you're felting that front part of the beak now so that that becomes solid and the rest stays fluffy. That's all you're doing. Just a few shallow stabs. They're not, they're not very deep at all because I don't want all the brown wool to sink into my felting mat. I just want to felt it right into itself. And when, once you've done this, what you might find, I, I don't know if that's so visible, you might see some wispy ends there. You can just cut them off if they are bothering you. Just cut them off. There, no longer there. And then you've got um, your beak here and all you need to do now is you're going to tease the end parts out of that beak. So the bit all the way to where you felt it, the top. And, um, and these end parts, they will be um, stabbed into the robin, into his face there, like that, um, to fasten the beak on. But before I do that, I noticed that there is actually quite a lot of brown so I'm going to take a, a little bit of this off. So I'm holding on so that I'm not tearing my, my the whole beak apart. I just need a little bit of these. So it looks more like that now. And now I'm going to put this where I've made that little dip in his face. And I'm going to stab the needle really close to where the beak is, the felted part of the beak. So I'm not spreading the brown fibers over his face. I don't want to do that. I want them to be disappearing into that a little arrow at the front. I'm doing this all over so that um, it disappears. If for whatever reason you have got those brown fibers and they're spilling out and you really don't like it, then don't worry, just felt it down, felt your beak down for now and then use whatever color it has spilled into, cover, cover the brown up. So whether that is in the white, you can just add a bit of white here or whether it's the red, just add a little bit of red or whether it's that lighter brown, um, then just cover that back up again and um, again you'll give your robin a last sort of makeover I just noticed there's a little bit of vegetation if you've got vegetation in your wool that's not a bad thing that just means that those sheep have been um, and still probably are happily running across the meadows and getting um, bits of grass in their in their um, wool and then it dries and often what you find is when you stab the wool, it comes to the top, the vegetation rises to the top. So you thought you picked it all out and you missed a bit and then it sort of comes up and that's fine. Once it comes up, just pick it out either with the tip of the needle or if you can get hold of it with your finger, just, just pull it out. 
I'm again still working a little bit on the shaping here, making the edges a bit neater because I do want this robin to be nice and um, nice, nice and precise. It is a stylized robin, so I'm I'm working on him a little bit more. Um, um, what's the word? Precisely than I would maybe on on other um, projects that I normally do, where it's where I like the wood um, mixing in and blending in with other wools. And I'm working on that shaping still, making sure that that um, nice white snowball that I made stays like a round ball. There we go. So now he's got a beak. That's lucky. And um, he's just missing eyes now. If you have got our... Um, go a bit bigger again. If you have got our um, Robin and uh, Christmas pudding wool pack, then you will have had eyes in there. But if you haven't then um, it, it definitely pays off getting these little glue-in eyes um, from us. This one, you, you should get six millimeter in your pack. Um, I don't actually know if I've got six millimeter here. I might only have five millimeter. Oh, let's have a little rummage. Ooh, that looks promising. Yes, let's get rid of the five. And let, let's use what we use in our um, Robin pack. Robins have got ginormous eyes actually compared to other birds. So let's um, give them just this on make, let's give them the big eyes. Right, so to um, add the eyes into it, I'll, I'll go a bit smaller again because that definitely works better for you to see what I'm doing. So you go small and um, the eyes can be, normally the eyes I would say are on the outside of the head with a robin, but because you're making a stylized robin, it looks really, really cute if they're at the front of the head. So I am making an, an, a hole sort of just here on the edge of where the brown is and I'm using my felting needle. However, if you have an awl, you can use that too. And then once the needle is sunk in, as much as you can sink it in before you lose the, the handle, you can give it a little jiggle and that will um, emphasize the hole. And then you can just literally slip in that little pin. It just pops in with no problem at all. And then you do that on the other side as well. Give it a little jiggle. Don't break your felting needle in the process. This is not a um, sort of a forceful thing to do. And then you can put um, the eye in there as well. And if you put them quite close together, they look really, really cute um, if, you, if you do that. So there's the eyes are popped in there now. And all I need to do now is I need to add a little dab of glue. And um, I'm just letting that glue bottle. There we go. So there we go. So just don't take the eyes out again. Just pull them out a tiny bit without them falling out. Put a dab of glue behind it like that and then push them straight in again. Don't worry if the white of the glue shows on the outside. It will dry completely transparent if you're just using an ordinary PVA glue. I can guarantee you that. Put that back in. And um, you've got now, you've got a little robin that's looking at you and saying, Hello there, and um, and you can say, you can also say, hello little Robin. There you go. He's all ready um, to have a little string attached to his top to hang him on a Christmas tree. Now I was saying earlier that you can add a little bit of a little bit of um, sparkling um, features to him, and um, I don't think I've mentioned this before on a live stream, but I will mention it now. You absolutely love this stuff, and it's called slap it on but I don't want you to slap it on I only want you to put it on very gently and to put it on very gently I've got an old bottle here I'm gonna hide that now because it looks absolutely horrible but um to put it on gently take the whole lid off so take the whole of the lid off don't don't try and um, use that hole that you can um, cut into there and then just give it a squeeze so that the the um the stuff's coming out it's gonna <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if it just literally squirted to, to the camera now? Where are, you, where are you? It's been well used, this bottle. Um, and uh, when you get to it, eventually, if you've got a new bottle, it, it will be so much better and so much quicker. Oh, God, it's coming. <laughs> oh, good dear. Um, you take a tiny amount. This is how much you take. And this stuff, we love this because this has got um it's got it's got glitter in it but it's biodegradable git glitter it doesn't um end up in in places where it shouldn't end up and all you're going to do now is you're just literally stroking a tiny bit 
onto the robin's chest and yes it it does look white because that white stuff will now um have to dry and I, i'll leave it to dry so i've just put that on there now and um give it a good old rub now what i love about this is that this stuff works on fabrics as well so if you don't want to use it on a robin use it on anything you want to add glitter to and it's washable it actually you know when you put glitter on something and then I don't know, a day later or even a year later, half of the glitter is everywhere else, but except where you wanted it to be. This stuff fuses into the fabric, whether it is wool or cotton or anything, it fuses into it. It, it, it It's not glue, so you can't use it to glue something together, um, but it's got a magic formula that allows the little glitter pieces that are on there to sort of um, fuse with the help of that white stuff into the fabric so once it's on it's on you're not going to get it off again so i'm going to leave him here to dry while i potentially have a little go at a at a um at a pudding but i just wanted to show you because it's really hard to see it in the camera but these little bits here these are all you, oh you can maybe just see it in the light just about it's really amazing it's like iridescent glitter and it just adds a little bit of sparkle to things um the sparkle of your life because we can never have too much sparkle i'm gonna have a little look at the comments again and see what people are um are reading uh, no no what people are saying i'm reading um try and and um see where where, where i've left it off okay <laughs> Oh no, I started something with these balls. Okay. Oh, I'm dreading to think. I don't I'm not sure I want to read all these comments because I won't be able to say anything here. Um okay, let's uh, see. Um stabbing along. I think my Robin's been at the sherry. Okay, we've we've covered that. I saw wish I had some sherry now. Um Alicia says, see, um yes, Steffi, you're way, 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 way ahead of me. I'm just doing his backside oh bless don't worry you can watch it again and then um and then if you're missing a bit and pamela says i cheat oh yeah no no oh my god that's just reminded me now okay i've read that one already that's why i didn't mention names Steffi. oh yes that's right a bad week everybody knows who that is um Steffi, your word bloopers are funny oh god i can tell you so many terrible word bloopers i don't even want to i don't even want to um wet felt you oh yes okay um Somebody retracted a message. I think that's just as well, probably. I wish I could retract my messages. Make the words unspoken. Um, <laughs> Jackie thinks that's funny anyway. Um, our red, orange, New Zealand merino also makes fabulous robins. Excellent. Yeah, that's sort of like a compromise between a, an orange and a red, maybe. Going to use all of mine for Christmas bunting. Ooh, nice. You are so creative, Alicia. You are creative. I can't wait to see all those strung up robins as a bunting. That that must be such a nice sight. I really want to see that now. Um, black glue and eyes available here. That's um, so that we have got the links on the live stream comment here. But if you um, need to catch up with it, hopefully they will also be somewhere else. Emma did tell me where they are, but I haven't haven't paid much attention to it. <laughs> um, Bridget 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 says love the robin. Thanks, Steffi. Diane says, so tweet, oh, <laughs> so tweet. Why didn't I think of that? Um, Rockin' Robin says, Pamela, slap it on. Yay, it's great. Absolutely. But don't slap it on. Just just gently, gently put it on. Um, doesn't make quite sound right. You, you, you'd buy it if it says slap it on. You wouldn't buy it if it says gently put it on, would you? So, yeah, it's great stuff. Decided Robin baubles are not my thing. Oh, no, Helen, really? Tell us more. Tell us more. Um, is this to do with wet felting um, the balls? Surely not. Um, Alicia says, yay, biodegradable glitter. Absolutely. Alicia says, wow, I have never seen this stuff used. There you go. It is great stuff. We love it. We sell lots of it, especially around Christmas. Definitely mine with the glitter. Um, Alicia says, hoggy Christmas clothes. Yes, you can... Um, are you saying that you can put it on the hoggy Christmas clothes? You've given me the clue, of course. So I, I have to um, introduce you to Huey and um, Holly, of course, because they're they're now um, they have they they've now made an appearance. They were a bit camera shy before. Um, oh, Jane has just joined us, and so did Anne. Um, 
I didn't, yes, Alicia spotted that. Um, Jane says, I'm a bit late, been to have my hair trimmed. Well, how about that? That's, um, that's a novelty. Never thought I'd say that, but um, Kathy says, love the Robin. Thank you, Kathy. And Erica says, such wonderful glitter stuff. Do you sell it? Do we sell it? Is um, Father Christmas's first name Nicholas or what? Do you say that? Isn't there something else? There's another saying. Um, does something to do with the Pope, but I can't think of it. Oh, yes, that's right. Is the Pope a Catholic? That's it. <laughs> I knew it had something to do with the Pope. Oh, dear. I need some slap it on. Definitely. Never too many sparkles. I'll stop them. I'll stop in the morning. It's too late. I'll probably stop myself. Um, he's too fat and squishy. Oh, no, but you need a fat little Robin because they, they blow themselves up to keep warm. So you can't have too fat a little Robin. Um, if you if you want any help, Helen, um, post a picture of it, of him onto our da -da -da -da, Every Want to Make a Facebook page and then um, we'll have a look at him and I'll tell you where to strategically place the needle to um, to unfatten him, maybe. But I don't think he should be unfattened. He might just be might just need a stab here or there to um, to change the shaping slightly. I'm going to have a zip of my, um, oh no, I mustn't say that. I always say that word wrong. Um, I'm having a little gulp of my peppermint tea. It's really hard for me to say certain letters, um, but it's also really hard for, I found for um, British people to, have, to hear certain um, letters from the German alphabet. So I, I've been tearing my hair out and I'm going to put you to the test now. Some people can't hear the difference between Günther and Gunther or um, Björn and Björn. So it's the umlaut um, consonants. And um, I, it used to drive me crazy. There was one person at work, <coughs> not this work, different work from a different life. And um, he just couldn't hear. And I said, but it's Günther. You must be able to hear Günther. But that's, by the way, that's a German name. And he said, I'm saying Gunther. I'm saying what you're telling me to say. And I'm like, no, it's Gunther, can't you hear the difference? And this is how I often feel when people are, when my, my children are saying, it's not a zip, it's not a zip, you can't say zip, that's what you do like this. It's a, it's a sip. And I'm like, but I'm saying sip, I'm having a sip of tea now. No, you can't say this. So um, I can't hear the difference. So it's a gulp. Okay, let's let's do a bit of um, puddying, if that's an if, if that's a verb. Um, or I should also say, if you're hanging or stringing your robin up, still not quite dry. I'm just gonna rest him like this. Use your um, hanging up string, and if you want to make absolutely sure that it's ooh, it's a long one. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was some off the reel already. Let's make it a bit shorter. So what you need to do is, um, a long needle definitely helps, but uh, you can squish him together a bit. Thread your needle with the hanging up string, just singly, so you only have got, um, you don't put a knot in it. And then you go all the way in at the top, da -da -da, all the way out at the bottom. And then you're going to turn around and do, do the same thing in reverse. And that way you have got the most solid um, fastening here because it, you're not, unless you tear the thread, this robin is, robin is going nowhere. And then he's um, secure. You can put a knot in the top. You can adjust the string length if you want to. And, um, and then you've got a nice hang up decoration there. Um, if, and, and at the bottom, it's literally where it's gone in and out. You can't really see it. But if, if it bothers you and you can see it, then just cover it with a bit of wool. And um, and that's him. I wonder if I can hang him up here. Ah, oh, I won't be able to use that camera now. But just for now, he can hang up there so you can see him. Of course, he'll turn his bum to you because that's what they always do, don't they? Come on now, don't be rude. Turn around. Let's try that. Oh, I've just moved that camera. There. Oh, that looks nice. He's a nice, happy Robin. I can see bits wrong on him now, but I, I'll stab him later. So I will, I will actually want to stab him more in his bum there and tuck in some of these wispy fibers. But that has got glitter on it at the moment, so I can't do that anyway. So um, let's have a little chat about the McHoggies. 
because it's getting to quite a desperate state. They are so wanting Homer to come home. Um, the children have been playing up crazily. Um, little Holly, she's been very naughty and she's just, um, without asking the permission of her parents, she's only young, she went to dye her hair and um, she's here. Come on, little Holly, show what you've done. Look, she's um, she's put hair dye in her hair. Now, if you don't know this already, but hedgehogs, they they um, they lose their spikes when they when they become adults. So she's gonna have to have this color hair now until her spikes fall out, and um, <clears throat> and she gets her adult spikes. It's a little bit like human people with well humans with teeth so that's when she gets her adult spikes that's when um she can dye her hair another color maybe and um she's quite a cool dude she's quite a cool teenager she's uh, forever getting in trouble because she won't um wear long enough tops so she's always showing off her belly button but then she's got the figure to do it why ever not she's just lost her shoe as well um yeah she's a bit of a she's a bit of a what can i say a cool teenager who um, yeah, gets up to all kinds of things that where her mum, poor old mum, who's been with them for quite a while now on, the, on their own, um, like puts their, their hand over her head and thinks, oh, what am I going to do with this? Where is Homer? Where is Homer? Where ho is Homer indeed? Well, I know where Homer is. I'll tell you in a minute where he is. Um, and this is Huey. This is her little brother. He looks extremely innocent but make no mistake because he teases his older sister all the time and even though they love each other very much they would never dream of telling each other that never it's it's never gonna happen it's always more like oh you are so boring or her little brother saying can you play with me look what i've got in my pocket and out comes a horrible spider or a slimy worm or something like that and she and holly is always like uh what's that that's so uncool and she walks off so um there's a, a bit of a dynamic going on but actually at the bottom of all of this they're just missing their dad and um they ask the, um heather the mum, every day when's dad home when's dad home when's dad coming home so but they have to wait a little bit longer and of course you all have to help them um getting homer home and Homer, he is somewhere else entirely. So Homer is, um, he's actually away. Um, what well, you know already, he's away. But he's, he's very far away. He can't just jump in the car and drive home because he's in the middle of, of the sea. He's, um, he, he has a very important role. He, um, have you ever been to an oil rig? If you've never been, then you might, you might not know that these people exist. But he's got a very important job. He sits all day in a really tiny little um, cabin. And all he does, he, he drives a little, a little submarine. It's only really tiny, small, that goes down and checks out that the legs of the oil rig are okay. And he sort of has a look around and sees that nothing is obstructing anything. So that's, that's his job. Far away from home, from his Scottish lovely family. Well, his wife is actually English, but... That we don't mind that um, far away from his lovely um, house and garden and um, his children of course so he's missing them very much and um, I'm just gonna have a little chat with Homer because he hasn't seen them for ages but he's there there he is he's looking he's looking quite happy actually maybe he's beginning to miss them probably is but he's, he's a gentle kind of soul you know he sort of puts up with what jobs need to be done and that's what he does and um and then he's looking forward to christmas what they don't know and i'm telling you this now he's got it all sorted all the christmas presents he's got it all sorted so when this um christmas project pack comes up um for sale on our web shop you can make the whole family and um the idea is that you do the, these each week leading up to Christmas. So it's you're opening the pack on the first of Advent, which is always a, a Sunday, then the second Advent, which is also Sunday. And then you've got a week to make the character. And in your little pack, you just get lots of little surprises as well, which I'm not telling you. And then on Christmas day, there's a fifth pack and there's a little um, Christmas surprise make in there for you as well. 
so that's all I'm gonna say what I do know is that we will have little add-ons so you might you make you make new little hoggies as they are in nature and then you can um, buy the felt to make them little clothes unless you want to use your own that's fine too we give you lots of help whether you've got a felt pack to make clothes or not from us how to make the little clothes like dungarees and and Heather actually she realized that the dress she wore was a, a bit too small so she's she's um she's up ooh, they're not they're, they don't know each other I mean they do but they're not together they're not they're not together you didn't see that <laughs> sorry Emma anyway um she didn't see him and um her dress is, is now a little bit bigger because she thought she's um maturing and she maybe shouldn't wear such short dresses <laughs> especially when she's not wearing any pants <laughs> Oh dear, and then um, of course um, Holly, Holly has got her shoe off again. She's got tight trousers on, and um, a very short top, and um, and Huey has just gone for a, a little wee. He's actually fallen off the table, and I can't reach him. It's right down there. He's got he's got dungarees on with a bib, and he's got a pocket as well. So you have to wait for for all. Um, for, for the next time when I when I show him to you okay let's um, just have a quick look at the comments again and then um, oh, okay so ooh, what do we just realized my tail is all the way to the bottom okay just tear a bit of tail off um, Alicia um, add to sub isn't working Emma Emma um, Oh, love him. She's a darling. She is a darling. Um, I love pink hair. She's a punk boggy. <laughs> a punk boggy. Oh, I love it. She's a, she's a, she's a poggy, maybe. A poggy. Um, that's a, that's a punk hoggy. Still see her with a nose ring or pierced belly button. Oh, don't tempt her now. Don't give her ideas. Don't listen, Holly. Yes, modern teen. I hope he's not playing away. No, no, no. Homer wouldn't do that. No, he's he's the earnest type of chap. Once he's um, committed to a hog, he'll be with that hog forever. No, no, he loves his Heather. Um, he's in an offshore. He's an offshore worker, very like the population up here, Mo, isn't it? That is so sweet. Yeah, that's it. <coughs> um. Um, yes, he is out in the North Sea. Oh, sure is Donna. Um, thank you so much. I have to get my cows in. <laughs> have a great day further till next time. I love it, Erica. Just drop it in. I've just got to get my cows in. Um, yeah, just, you know, as you do. Um, yes, go and get your cows in now. I hope they're Frisians. Are they Frisians, Erica? They probably are. Um, I think Homer needs a bright yellow southwestern raincoat. He, I think he might actually. Well, I'll leave you all to make that. Um, um, bye, Erica. Thanks for tuning in. These cows, send us a picture, definitely. Um, I'm sure that will be a moving experience, Erica, says Pamela. <laughs> uh, is he working on the Claire oil rig of the Shetland Coast? I have no idea, Donna. I'll ask him. Um, I will ask him. He's handsome. Thank you, Bridget. So let's just do a little bit more. Um, I'll do a quick, super quick Christmas pudding, shall I? And I, I'll, I'll do it. Um, I'll do it here in front of you without the small screen, so that I don't have to move the robin. How about that? Or let's see. Maybe I should go um, into this screen. Oh yes, let's do that. But this is that all right with the pudding there? Probably yes. Okay, so brown this time. Roll it up like you did with the with the Christmas robin. Tease it out, get it round lots of times. There. Make a nice smooth surface if you can. There we go. I'm gonna pull this a bit closer to me now. And then use your needle. You probably have to use less of a um, stubby needle uh, for this one because that short fiber wool is the portuguese merino which um doesn't like the the uh, coarse needles very much at all so i'm using a less coarse needle here giving it a bit of a stab to firm it up and get rid of all of the 
wispy bits that are sticking out and shaping it into a round shape while I'm doing that. And um, then I'm going to add the white topping, the cream topping onto it. There. Good, a good um, bit of wool fits into my palm. I'm laying that on and that needs to be nice and thick. But if you can't manage the thickness straight away, then just add more over the top. What you don't want is you don't want to see the brown shining through. So make it a nice dense cover. And then you can um, give sort of the outside a bit of a um, um, creative um, edge. So it's like the creams running over more on one side than on the other. And you remember how we did the wings? That's exactly how you create the edge. So on one end, it could be sort of higher up, like here, and then it comes right down on the other side. So it's a bit like a roller coaster road on the outside of this um, pudding. And, um, and then you just get that edge done first. Now, what we didn't want to do earlier with the robin was to have um, sort of a distinct different of surface. With the pudding, it's actually okay. So you're going in to the base of that white from underneath to give it almost like this sort of hanging over um, appearance because the cream is oozing, makes me hungry now, is oozing over the side of the pudding there. So you do want that to be quite um, different in terms of, um, um, how, how can I say, um, I'm, I'm lost for words right now. Um, you want it to be overlapping. I think that's what I'm trying to say. You don't want it to be a, um, a smooth transition. You do want it to be slightly overlapping. So I'm going right into um, the white underneath, from underneath. And I haven't felt at the top yet, but I'm going to do that next. So I'll just give it a few stops. I'm not going to felt it down too much. I'm going to leave that Cape Merino short fibered white to do its trick by looking nice and um, creamy on top of there so once you've done that you're gonna have to make tiny little holly berries out of the red wool and um, there we go that looks great okay so this is the edges of the pudding here now slightly different all around and of course you can readjust them but I'm making a quick pudding here now and then you use some red and you roll that into a ball between your fingers and you're not going to have to felt that even separately just roll it up like you would do with a large shape so you've got a little ball here now just plonk it on the top like that like the cherry on the icing and just stab it around the edge so don't go right into the red ball just stab around the edges because that will um, keep it 3d and it fastens it on and um, you don't need to do much felting with this um, holly berry so you have a you have a, a 3D shape that you, I haven't stabbed into the middle at all. I've just literally go, gone around the outsides like that. And then you repeat that with um, more red. So keep those um, berries quite small. Roll the wool up. That's what I'm doing here with my fingers so that it's barely, barely holds together, but just like a little ball. And then um, all you're doing is stabbing into the outer on the outside. So you're tucking these fibers in, even if they're a bit unwilling to um, be fastened down. Just you, you tell them with your needle, go down there, go down there and it will just happen. But the nice thing is that you're keeping that berry round um, shaped and you're not even having to felt it down. If it's ginormous, then either take it off and make it smaller or you can stab into it to reduce the size because this is in, in effect that red wool is quite unfelted still. And then do a third one for tradition. There. And I'm going to show you the quick version of how to make a leaf because you felt that straight onto the holly. There we are, three clustered all together and just keep going in between the berries as well so that they they are separate from each other. They look distinct from each other. And that's what it looks like at the moment. There, like that. And then you need a little bit of green. And if you've got our pudding pack, then you will have had that variegated green. And then as with the wings, you're going to felt this 
onto here and all I'm doing at the moment is I'm giving it a middle parting here and then I'm going to um, tuck it in by the berries and then you're pulling because the holly leaf has got these jagged e edges you're pulling out sort of in a one centimeter distance you're just fastening the ends in like that I don't know if that yeah that, that's quite visible you can see those um, condensed areas and then in between you go back so you've fastened the edges the the jaggedness on by stabbing into it and then you pull it back on the other in between those um i try and show you here again in fact i'm oh no i can't go small because that robin is hanging off there so let's do that quickly with this side here so you you put the holly leaf felt it down with a pointy a point going out like that and then you pull it back in between those pointy bits that you fasten down and go down the middle this is if you want to fasten a holly leaf on there are other ways of making holly leaves if you want them to stick up like here um oh no you can't see that because it's out of the screen <laughs> there so if you um, this holly leaf is fastened onto it and this one is a flapping of it so there are other ways of doing this but i won't be showing you that right now because we're running out of time and pe people need to go and get their cows in so um that's the holly leaf fastened on and then you have to adjust the outside if you feel that it needs another one then put another one on there if it needs more white on top then just put more white on top if you need to adjust the shaping of it adjust the shaping of it there's lots and lots of scope to uh, felt this down more and um, adjust the shape um, that's entirely up to you how you want to do this when you hang it up it's exactly the same go all the way in to the top with your needle and the thread come all the way out go back turn around come back out hang it up and all done so that's a super fast um, Christmas pudding you can spend a lot longer on this and tie it, make it more tidy and firmer and um, neater looking. But that's basically how you make a Christmas pudding. If you've got our Christmas bauble pack, which is the robin and the pudding, then you can make um, three of each of those. And if you um, have our penguin and reindeer pack, which is, which are these, then um, we will be doing these together very soon. Emma is going to tell you when. I think it's actually remember when it is if it's the end of this week um or whenever anyway there that's the um other two baubles that oh they're actually looking at you even um that you can be make that you can make with me um on another live stream and um, i'm just gonna have a quick look again at um what people are saying uh Okay, that's area gone with the cows um punk oh yeah so you did mean say punk hoggy yes punk so it could be a, a poggy um diane says so much um enjoy your chats and tutorials thank you so much well you're very welcome um emma wants a bake well tart now because it did look like a cherry on the top um oh i love bakery tarts um alicia says i was just thinking the same and um, kind of reminds me of the calendar girls <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe i should read these comments first before i read them <laughs> out loud oh yes so next tuesday 21st is when we're doing penguins and um reindeers thank you alicia um at 2 p.m reindeer and penguins and um laura says the reindeer are so cute i love the i love them they always i love them because you can give them really stupid expressions in their faces like droopy eye um eyelids um you can give them different hairdos hairdos um there was, there was a third one somewhere oh there's loads here actually um there's another one some of them look look really really um oh, this looks all right this one looks all right he doesn't look too um, a lot of them always remind me of politicians. I don't know why. I think it's the, I think it's the baggy eyes and um, the the um, saggy 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 skin. There you go. 
Um, there was actually one that reminded me of Nigel Farage a lot. Can't find him now. Probably this one. <laughs> In the nicest possible way. Um, great makes. Um, Bridget says, thanks everyone and Steffi, hard to believe I'm in another hemisphere and we're chatting. It's really lovely to have you and everybody else as well, whether you are um, here on in the UK or whether you are elsewhere in the world. Um, if you are somewhere in, in space, then we love you um, to be here too. So that's all from me today and um, all from Emma and all from the makers. And um, I love, I'd love to see all your uh, uh, Robin and uh, pudding makes, of course, as we always do. So do share them with us on Everyone a Maker. We are on Facebook. Um, that's our Facebook name, themakers.co.uk. Can't see that last bit, but um, trust me, it's there. So if you want to tag us on anything, then feel free to do that. Um, we are, of course, on Instagram and on Twitter as well. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel. YouTube channel if you haven't got um, haven't got that yet haven't done that yet and uh, like this post and share it with your friends and your family and then um, we'll get lots and lots of lots more subscribers and then we can spread the needle felting love and other love as well and um, we see you very 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 soon um, in fact we see you probably on Thursday which is only in two days time I have no idea what I'm doing but I will be ready I will be there and I will be doing it so Take care, everybody. Um, stay safe and 